Hi everybody, Tom Ball from Sun Racing here, joined by Templegate of The Sun and Chad Yeomans of Betway to discuss Thursday's action, both at Newmarket and at York. It's a cracking day, an afternoon of action. We've got the Sir Henry Cecil Stakes up first at Newmarket, the 150, where Al Suhail looks the one to beat on ratings. Uh, but there's some very exciting horses up against him, including Lord Campari, Magical Morning, Mystery Power, Ropey Guest, and Tilsit, who was a 16-length winner at Newcastle last time out. Chad, how's the market looking, and what's your uh, what's your take on the race? Uh, it's quite an open-looking race, actually. Lord Campari's 15-8 to favourite with us at the moment. Uh, I think you'll find this horse will win if he if he's very well supported. Uh, Variant horses don't go on backs in good races. I think is the is the phrase. Um, and I, but I just get the feeling that this one will drift slightly. And whilst he's got a lot of ability, he beat a good horse called Saar last time out. I just don't know whether this is going to be one step too far. Al Sahail is the second favourite, uh, four to one at the moment. Ran down the field in the Guineas. Um, that didn't surprise me. I thought that was probably a bit too hot for him, really. But he did have some good two-year-old form. And a bit further down, there's a horse called Mystery Powers, one I like. Um, he won the superlative at the, at the July Festival last year for Richard Hannon then ran well behind Pinatubo at Goodwood obviously that form turned out to be very good uh, with positive then going on to win the Betway Solario after that that form has worked out and Mystery Power ran ninth in the jersey and I think that's probably about the same strength of the form as running down the field in the Guineas where Al Sahel finished now Sahel's fourth and Mystery Pay up Power's eighth at that kind of the run to a similar mark for me and for that reason, I think Mystery Power 8 to 1s are cracking each way bet. Okay. Cheers, Chad. Lovely. Uh, what about you, Tabagay? What's your opinion on the race? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I'd expect quite a lot of improvement from most of these. It's early days, isn't it? Um, also, Hale, obviously, coming from the Guineas. Uh, that run wasn't so great, but a couple of good efforts at Group 3 level last season. Uh, I also thought Magical Morning and Tilsit both won pretty well last time. And obviously, these are much tougher races, uh, but both have plenty of scope for improvement um, I mean if you're looking at purely on form what they've done so far I mean you probably give the edge to Lord Campari especially as I mean the second came out and won the other day albeit not a particularly good race it won but it won it well enough uh, the time of Lord Campari's effort at Newbury was decent as well um, so I think probably just about go for that one but I, I think Magical Morning and Tilsit could both improve a lot Okay, lovely. I'm going to agree with you, actually, myself. I think Lord Campari was visually very, very taking last time out. I was super impressed with that. Um, I think he's a very exciting horse for the future. Um, Magical Morning beat Hydros last time. Tilsit is 16 left winner at Newcastle. But I just think Lord Campari had that little bit extra, that little bit maybe that's needed to win a race like this. So hopefully he can go very close. Just I know he's head of the market, but, you know, he looks the most likely winner for me. Okay, guys, on to the Bahrain Trophy. Well, we've got the likes of Al Arsi. Al Dabaran, uh, Miss Yoda and Dawn Rising in the field, alongside a few others. Uh, Steve, come to you first this time. What's your take on the race? Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful how you say Al Arsi, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, either way, you won by 10 lengths last time, didn't they? And they uh, seemed to love the mile and a half trip. Uh, yeah. Winning at Newmarket, didn't it? Um, obviously, this is better horses again, but uh, that was impressive. Longer trip will suit. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm very interested to see how Miss Yoda bounces back from the Ribblesdale. She's a bit disappointed in the way she ran there after winning the Lingfield Oaks trial quite uh, cosily. And you've got Al Dabran in there as well. Uh, didn't go so well in the Queen's Vars. Um, but, you know, Santiago, fair enough, won that fair and square, Frank the form and all the rest of it. Um, but I think Al Arzi, I think the extra fair long and having won so easy last time, that's the one I'll be going for, I think. Okay, lovely. Al Arzi for the Hamdan and Maktoum colours. Chad, what about you? Yeah, Al Arzi's been well backed. Uh, he was essential uh, throughout the winter, has been named as the best of the Haggis three year olds uh, and was, was a Derby prospect. And I think maybe in any other year with a clear run, he may have run in the Derby. Um, he was beaten first time up this season. But then, as we, all, as we both said, you know, he, he hacked up last time, didn't he? And the Stefan trip certainly certainly seem to make some form of improvement. There is, there, there are a few you can make a case for. I mean, Dawn Rising, don't know how good he is. There is a line of form between Sander Cannons and uh, Al Dabaran, and you can kind of pitch it back to Santiago. And would Dawn, Santiago, would Dawn Rising be anywhere close to him? He'd say he'd be nowhere near the pecking order, because he would have been to 
one of the big races already. He would have he would have ran in Queen's Vars or he'd have ran it in one of the classic trials. He hasn't. The fact he's just won his main on his on his third or won his major on his third start, um, albeit by twelve lengths. You just have to suggest that he wouldn't be that high up in the Ballydore pecking order. And they're just they they have runners in all the good races, don't they? But usually their better ones are running in the better race on the biggest stages. So you'd have to be very mindful of him. Al Dabaran was third behind Santiago. So if you think that form is ledger form, Al Dabaran probably didn't have the best of passages. There's a chance he can improve from that. Miss Yoda, I'd be totally against. I thought her Lingfield Oaks trial win, I thought that was weak. Uh, there's been a, well, I think the majority of them have ran since. It's, uh, doesn't, the form hasn't stacked up at all. Um, if gun to my head, I'd say Al Arzu is probably the most talented horse in the race. So for that reason, Without putting up a, another fab, I do think he, you know, go well and take on the beating. But a bigger price, sound of cannons for Brian Meehan. Meehan's horses are in as good a form as I can remember them. They've, he's had plenty of winners, plenty of first time out two year olds as well, which is unusual for him because his do usually improve over time. Um, ran fourth behind English King and fifth, um, where was he fifth? I'll just have a quick look. Fifth behind Pile Driver in that race. Um, I think going up in trip will help. And I just think at the prices, he could sneak a place. You know, you get 14, 16 to 1. Lovely. Thanks, Chad. Um, I'm going to go and side with the horse that you possibly don't think is in very high up in the Edna Bride packing order. That is Dawn Rising. Um, obviously, he's still very unexposed. I was really impressed with the way he won last time out. I thought he put a really nice distance between him and a very admittedly weak field. Um, but he looks the kind who horse is going to really step up for this um, hike in distance, albeit only by a furlong. But I think he's got plenty more to come. And he'd be my pick in this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I fear I'll ask you on, on that really impressive maiden win last time out. And obviously Al Dabaran, who's been there and done it, but he's starting to look a little bit exposed for me. Um, I know he's back down in grade a little bit, but um, for me, it's going to be Dawn Rising and the Bahrain Trophy. On to the Tattersall's July stakes, where I'm actually very excited to see Carter return for Mark Johnson and Jim Crowley, who was second in the Coventry stakes last time out. We've always got Tactical in there, who won the Windsor Castle. The once raced, once winner, Swiss ace, Braden O'Brien. And there's a few others in there who are definitely worth keeping an eye on, including escape route for Richard Farhi. He has a man who was second to tactical at Royal Ascot and also Jimmy Sparks, who won last time out for Brian Meehan. Uh, Chad, I'll come to you first now. Uh, what's your opinion on this race? Do you think the favourite is the right favourite? I think he's the right favourite, but I think well, this is a proper race. This is the proper two race. They're the two roles we've seen so far. I think this this is a you could make a case for Carter tactical Swiss Ace Yazaman and then you mentioned Escape Route. I quite like Victory Heights. Thought he was running on through okay. the field in the, in the um, Windsor Castle. I think he'd get closer to Tactical and Yazaman than he did, and he's five times the price. So I certainly think that with that run behind, providing they all come forward, he won't be he shouldn't be that price. So I think he should go off a lot shorter. Um, I do think the way Carter won at Newbury was very impressive. I was watching that fixture on the Friday night, the week before Ascot, um, and I did think, "Core, cool, this horse is quick. He's fast. He's got plenty of ability." And he backed that up six days later with a, with a second place in the Coventry behind um, Nando Parado. So definitely got lots of ability. I wouldn't want to pinpoint one if I'm being brutally honest, because it's so, you could make you literally could make a case for all of them. I'd love to see tactical win for Betway Ambassador Andrew Balding, of course. Um, Yazaman was close and ran on through the field again. It is such a good race. And for me, it's one. I don't want to put my neck on the line. I'm just going to watch, enjoy, and hopefully we see a real good performance and a real good race. Yeah, absolutely. It's a cracking contest, isn't it? Steve, do you do Victory Heights or you, uh, do you fancy something else? No, I, th- I, I did mark with Victory Heights down as being overpriced. I thought it was a bit unlucky. Um, and that's the race I think might work out for this because I thought Tactical did really well to win the Windsor Castle. The clock backs up the visual performance. Um, I've had a look at his pedigree. You know, Toronado was a miler. Um, the sire, uh, the down rather won over six and seven as well, I think. So I don't think the extra furlong will be a problem. And I think there's more to come from Tactical. Uh, Carder, yeah, I mean, the 150 to one shot, that won that uh, Coventry Stakes. I think that was just a rick in the prices. It won it fair and square. I don't think it was a ridiculous um, winner. And I don't know how anybody in the whole world could have tipped that. You know, we we'll, we'll, we have to mention it by by contract now that Callum tipped it. So we have to mention <laughs> it every time. It's fair play to him. Um, but I think Tactical has got more going, more to come. I think the extra furlong will be fine. Uh, and I think he has a man tactical 
that could fight this out again. Lovely stuff. I agree. I think Yazaman is, is going to be the one to beat over this extra distance, the extra furlong here. I think that's going to really suit him. Um, and I can see him turning the tables, considering he had to come from a long way back at Ascot. Um, so hopefully this stiff six should be right up his street. So he'd be my pick in the July stakes. Um, moving on now to the Bet365 Handicap, which is a very, very competitive race uh, for three-year-olds. Um, lots in this with big chances, you'd have to say, including Sunset Breeze, who was a really nice winner last week. Dance in the Street for Kieran Fallon Jr., taking off three pounds. Plenty of others. Lexington Dash, who really impressed the new market last time. And also Miras, who pulverised his opposition at Pontefract from Mark Johnson on his most recent start. Um, Templegate, Steve, come to you first. Uh, there are plenty in this of big prices on there, but who, who takes your eye the most? Um, of the ones near the top of the market, I, I was very impressed with Miras, obviously, stepping up from Pontefract to here. will take some doing, but did it really nicely. Um, but there's another, Brad De Brief and Byline are the two I quite like as well. Um, they were you know, behind each other last time. Megan Nichols taking three pounds off byline. I thought that horse looked like he had more to come uh, from that Haydock run last time. Uh, I don't know what the weather's like down there. That's the only thing because it was a bit, it was a bit sticky at Haydock that day. Um, probably could do with it not being on too uh, on the fast side, but we'll see. But uh, I thought Brad the Briefs one on the Rolling Mile as well. Um, good win, and then that uh, solid third at Haydock. Um, to come to one is not easy, but. I think Byline's the one just about for me. Great stuff. One for high clear there. Chad, what about you? Well, just, just on the weather front, I've just had a quick look. It looks like they are going to get a little bit of rain uh, in between now. Well, on Saturday, really, it looks like it's rain on and off. Certainly a little bit heavier throughout the night. So it might have a bit more give in the ground than what we first think. Um, really competitive handicap. I think the, right, the favourite at the moment, Dancing in the Street, 92 with us, is the right favourite. Third behind Art Power and flying through the field. He was good form. Third at Haydock behind Ishivaru on a seasonal debut. Didn't get a good run and flew home. You can only give this horse one more chance of getting into traffic and then flying through the field before you just think he likes running behind horses and he flies a bit too late and you can't back him with confidence. But if he does rep, uh, reproduce that third at Aston Royal Ascot, he's got an absolute cracking chance. And he is, like I say, at the right <coughs> excuse me, end of the market. It's two at slightly bigger price. I quite like the look of. The top horse, Volatile Analyst, uh, won on debut, then was fourth behind um, Golden Horde Threat in the Richmond at um, Goodwood last year. Royal Dornock was in that, obviously, then wanted to win the Royal Lodge. It, fifth was Symbolise, who finished third in the jersey this year. That race is rock solid. Got a bit of an injury, was put out for the season. Came out recently and made hard work, really, um, of in, on his reappearance, but gave weight away to the second. And managed to, but, but managed to, you know, to win, which is good on, on reappearance. Definitely lots of ability. Could be group horse masquerading in a handicap. I know that everyone hates that cliche saying, but he really could be just that little bit better on that Goodwood form because he really wasn't far away at Goodwood. Um, but the one I really like at a much bigger price, and I'm surprised it's so big, is Golden Dragon. The trained by Stuart Williams, and I think trained by someone else would be a half the price. So finished sixth on debut, um, ran reasonably well. Then won his next two starts at Windsor. On the second of his third starts, a sec on his a second victory, sorry, on his third start, he beat a horse called Kings Lynn of Andrew Balding, owned by Her Majesty the Queen. That went on to win a big sales race. Then finished fifth in the Cornwallis at um, Newmarket at Group 3. Didn't get, a re didn't get a good run whatsoever that day. Probably didn't handle the dip overly well. Still quite green, but was still bang there. Um, and if you look through, that, through the form of that race, I think three lengths behind was Lazuli, who went off 9-4 for the charge at the weekend. There are some really decent lines of form in this horse's, in this horse's book. Um, Kate has only had one run this, this season, was drawn 10th in, in behind Art Power that day. Um, broke really well, was leading, and then after a furlong of, of the race, was pulled up and at the back of the field. Then stayed on steadily again, and I just think they probably didn't want to break that well to, be, to try and then pull him back and get him in behind horses and closed up. I think they thought they were probably going to split and they didn't. They all came down the middle of it in the end. And I just think with that experience behind him, he's an absolutely huge price to run a cracking race here. Lovely reasoning there. Big old price, about 40 to 1, isn't he? I think around about. Yeah. Um, so we uh, sipping the champagne if that comes in. I'm going to go with a, a similarly large price, not quite as big a price, um, but I still think will to win. It's got plenty more to come on turf. 
he's not had much of a chance to show it. And last time out, he didn't really handle the track at Windsor. And I think he's got plenty of room in this market. He had some really nice form on the all-weather earlier uh, last year. And uh, Marco Vianney is a nice young rider. He takes off five pounds. So I can see Will to Win going pretty well as well. On to the Princess of Wales' stakes now. Uh, a pretty hot race, this one, with some interesting horses lining up, including Enbahar, who gets away from her rivals for Jim Crowley and John Goldson. She had some really good group form last season. Old Persian bidding to uh, resurrect his career after that horrible fifth last time out where he didn't find much at all. He wears first time, first time cheap pieces now. Alunak, who produced a really big run in the Hardwick last time behind Fanny Logan. Communique, who we all know loves Newmarket, although didn't show much when last at the track, or that was on the Rolly Mile. Desert Encounter Forest Ranger Antonio de Vega, who won a listed race last time out, and Dam Mayo for Ed Vaughan complete the field. It's a group two, and I think it's fair to say it's a, it's a group two where most of the horses have group form at group level. Um, Steve, what's your take on the race? Yeah, it's quite a tricky one, this, isn't it? Um, and Bihar, I understand why she's favourite. I mean, if you look at her record at group two level, uh, she's won her last three group two races, you know, well, and then good run at Longchamp in a group one to finish last season. Um, maybe possibly one a, a little bit further these days. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, old Persian, I mean, I used to be a big fan of that horse, but I mean, I think I could run faster than it did last time. I mean, that was <laughs> shocking, really. I mean, and first time cheek pieces on a five year old with so much experience is probably not a great angle, but I mean, they may just wake him up. He may have just gone a bit, you know, old boyish, you know, and that may help. Um, I think I, I was pretty impressed with the way a Lunak ran last time behind Fanny Logan. Um, I think that's just the second run, was it, for Andrew Baldwin? So not had, they not yeah. had him for very long. Um, ticks the boxes on the trip. The ground will be fine, whatever happens. I think, given that there's a big question mark about old Persian, who's the same price, I think for around five to two, eh, five to one rather, as we speak now, I think uh, a Lunak is, is, is a fair price and should run well. Great stuff. Big one last time behind Fanny Logan. Chad, what are your thoughts on the race? <laughs> I tend to agree with Alanak. I mean, he's only beaten two lengths in the Breeders' Cup turf behind Bricks and Mortar. I think, and this is, this, I don't know for sure, but I think an international campaign towards the end of the season will be something on the radar. Uh, maybe something like the Melbourne Cup and then back for Breeders' Cup. That kind of, that end of the year will be the more interesting. I do think he probably want further than a mile and a quarter, a mile and a half. I think he probably want, I think he will, to see him at his best, he will want to go up in trip again. Slightly. It was a really good run. It was a really good run at Royal Ascot. There are question marks around so many in the field. Whilst you say they're proven group horses, they are. There are so many questions. If Communique ran to the same figure that he ran to when he won the race last year, he's got a cracking chance. But he's just been slightly disappointing. I do just fear, though, back at Newmarket, fast ground, go from the front. It could be really hard to peg back. Joe Fanning, one of the best jockeys at, fr at front running jockeys, knows his fractions better than most. I'd be tempted to back him each way on the fact I think he'll go from the front and try and grind it out and try and make it a, a war of attrition. Again, Old Persian's got plenty of class. I think we'd all agree that on Old Persian's day, he'd be able to, he'd be able to win this. And he'd be, but the fact that he doesn't give it as often as he should, I can't be separating with Mahard to back him at 9-2 to two in such a competitive field. They're going to want the headgear to work, aren't they, I think? They're going to, they're going to need the headgear more, I think. I think Enbi is clearly really talented. But where does that line stop? I've ran three times as a three-year-old, nobody won once. And then last year, managed to win. I think she was just incredibly well-placed last year. To win the race, she was winning at Haydock, Don Costa, Goodwood. She was really well-placed. And then she stayed on past beaten horses uh, behind Annapurna in France in the Group 1. And I just don't know whether this is just one step too far on her improvement and she'll be pitched back in against her own sex. So all that said, I think Alunak could go well and I think I'll back Communique each way at a price. Great stuff. Alunak, for both of you there, really. Um, I agree. Got a massive chance based on that run in the hard week last time where he beat some really good horses. Um, but I'm going to go with Enbihar, um, despite what Chaz just said. I think... She was really progressive last season. That third at the end of the at the end of the campaign, maybe she was just feeling it a little bit. And John Gosson has got a really good line through Alanak with obviously Fanny Logan, who won the hard work. Yeah. Um, so I think he, he knows what he's got in Enbiha. Um She doesn't have to carry a penalty. In actual fact, she gets away from her rivals. So hopefully um, she can run a big race. That is Newmarket wrapped up. So we're going to go up north to York, where the Musidor and the Dante take place. Not in their usual spots. Usually we see them before the Derby in the Oaks as trials, but this year they are in their own races in their own right. 
And if we start with the Musidora chaps, trying to piece this one, I mean, it's very difficult. There are some really unexposed fillies in here, and almost all the horses you could give a chance to. Um, perhaps the most notable ones are Richetta and Franconia, both for John Gosden. Now, it's slightly surprising for me that Frankie the Tory has, ch has chosen to ride Richetta, considering Franconia has got the best form of the two so far. Uh, Carl de Duro has got a really strong hand in this race because he also runs Pocket Square, who was a Group 3 winner when last seen. Uh, good often have got Dubai Love, Lake Lucerne. And then there's a few others, including Bar Ridge, Alba Flora, who won nicely on debut. Uh, Golden Hind, who was second last time in Rosa Kildare for Mark Johnson, who looks more exposed than the rest. Chad, start with you, mate. What do you reckon about this race? Uh, I think if I, to, you know, if I said you Carla Dabdullah will win the race, you probably, probably wouldn't be too far wrong. <laughs> um, when I looked at the race and saw Franconia and Rysetta both in it, I did think they were the wrong way around in the market. I, I question the form of the Abingdon that uh, Franconia won. I really don't think that was a strong race. And it's no surprise to me, the, the, the race that Rysetta won on debut was quite impressive. The, the, the clock backs that up and the, the, the figures behind it are, are impressive. Um, a few people who are into their time a bit more than I am did say to me that performance was very smart and that of a way above average three-year-old. So I'll take that on board. Um, and that's probably for me why Frankie's riding. The other horse, Roger Charlton trained, pocket square, clearly very talented. Um, she won the Group 3 at Deauville on her final start, beating a horse called Run Wild. Run Wild came out and I think may have broke the track record at Newmarket or broke a track record at Newmarket in her success at the Guineas, uh, Guineas Festival. If she's, she doesn't have any penalty and she runs off, a, off level weights with them all, she must have a cracking chance. But I'm going to take a chance on Barige for William Haggis and Dane O'Neill. Okay. Fifth in a hot maiden, um, and, and stayed on to the line and through the line, and then bolted up next time out. I just think Haggis wouldn't be putting her in here if he didn't think she was good enough. Um, and currently with Betway, she's 22 to 1. I can't back her with us. Uh, I'll have to take shorter prices somewhere else, but I do think <laughs> she'll run incredibly well. Love that. Good stuff. Barage for Chad. Uh, Steve, what about you? Yeah, I mean, Frankie was uh, jocked up all week on Franconia. I was a bit surprised from that point of view to see him switch to the right setter, but obviously that speaks volumes, doesn't it? The fact that he's at York at all when there's a great meeting at the bottom of the street um, yeah. kind of makes you think, well, what's he gone up there for? Because his ride in the Dante doesn't appear to be mm. a massive chance at first glance anyway. Um yeah, I agree with a lot of what Chad said. I am somebody who probably pays too much attention to speed figures, but Rice Setters or one at Newmarket first that was very good. Um, Graham Lee riding Franconia. I, I couldn't see a ride for John Gosden in the past four or five years. Um, so it's a big chance for him. And I, I see in the betting, it's still favourites, Franconia. Um, but I think of the two, I think take the hint, right setter. Um, Frankie rode you by love last time as well at Royal Ascot, so he's got a, an idea about that one as well. That one's got some decent form out in Maidan, but it does look to have a bit to bridge uh, for this one. So, yeah, I think right setter um, will, will get the tick for me. Okay, lovely. Cheers, Steve. I've got a huge opinion on this race. I think it's really open. Um, plenty of exciting fillies in here. I just hope there's some, it's a good race and we see a good winner. Um, of, of the three Carl de Zilla ones, I'm keenest actually on pocket square for Roger Charlton. She was quite impressive beating Run Wild at Deauville uh, on heavy ground, but I think she'll be uh, more adept on this faster surface, as she showed at Ascot when winning a maiden, a novice stakes, I should say. And I think the step, step up to a mile and a quarter, uh, one or two and a half, she really suits her. So she'd be my pick, but I'm not, I've not got a huge view on the race. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy, I think. Um, moving on to the Colts, we see the Dante stakes, always one of the more exciting races at the beginning of the season. We see it later on, as we all know, where highest ground... The Niarchos family could have a very exciting runner here for Sir Michael Stout. Obviously, bypass the Derby, instead comes here. Only had two starts, beat the very exciting Vaz Koenig last time out of Haydock. Looks a real impressive recruit and could have a big future. He takes on Cormorant, who won the Derenstein Derby Stud trial. Brendan O'Brien under Patrick Beggy last time out. James Doyle takes over this time. Al Mathar's done nothing wrong in two starts so far. He goes for Richard Hannon. Thunderous Mark Johnston, one Alcano, who's been contesting Group 1s. Well, one group one in the Guineas in here at least earlier in the season. And also in Cypher, who gets Frankie on board for John Gosden, but quite a big price. The outside of the field are around about 10 to 1. 
Uh, Steve, coming to you first, do you think highest ground is a certainty? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I think it's the most likely winner. Um, that was a good performance to beat Walt Koenig, who I think is probably still going to win good races itself at Taydock last time. Uh, the, the trips obviously suited well, uh, just a third run. There should be a lot more to come. Uh, and when you look at the rivals, really, they don't look up to Dante's standard unless they do something um, a lot better than we've seen. I mean, Cormorant won the Derrins Town, which is normally a massive plus, but uh, straight away before the horse was even back, they, Paddy Beggy and even Aid O'Brien were saying he won that probably because he was the fittest one, and that's probably his peak. Um, so that puts you off. Uh, Thunderous, yeah, didn't do a lot wrong um, behind Vulcan Star, but again, and in Cypher. Looked a bit short at this level to me. I mean, I've got Juan Alcano in my tent to follow, and I do think I do like the horse. Um, I think it ran well in the Guineas. Um, was slightly disappointed in it at Ascot, even though it wasn't beaten too far. Um, but I hope highest ground wins because Sir Michael Stout could do with a real flag bearer, um, and and I think he will. I mean, obviously, odds on. Not going to you know nothing amazing about it, but looks the one to beat for me. Excellent. Cheers, Steve. Ciao. What about you? Yeah, highest ground. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's get-rich-quick scheme, is it, by any means? But he is the one that is the most unexposed, the most exciting, and probably the right favourite. Uh, Cormoran, as we said, beat Russian Empress. If you're actually going to go for lines of form, Cormoran could be favourite, or should be favourite, but if he was just the, if it was a battle of the fittest, and he was fitter than the others, the others have come forward, if that was his big day in the sun, if that was his Gold Cup, he's probably not a firm selection. I did think Thunderous ran really well um, on his first start for a while. Whether he quite is up to this standard, I don't know. But to be honest, highest ground might not be. I just think I'd probably rather back Cormorant or Thunderous each way than highest ground at five to six. Just on the basis that they've all still got a little bit to prove. Um, you don't necessarily need to find the winner to have a profitable bet. And I think that's why I'll probably be drawn into backing a couple of them each way to try and get second place, and if they win, even better. Um, just a quick question, Steve, on Juan El Cano. After he ran in the Guineas, like I thought it was a cracking run. I, I was surprised to see them go up, up in trip. I thought drop down to seven furlongs. If he bowled out in front somewhere, he'd be really good. He'd be really tough to catch. And I'm yeah. surprised, again, they're sticking at this going further, but they definitely know more than I do about horses. Yeah, well, and it didn't obviously appear to stay brilliantly at Ascot. Um, and yet the running style, everything everything you say, I, I I thought, well, you know, I thought Myler at the start of the season. But yeah, I haven't seen the guineas. I, I would like to see that. But I mean, say that about Pinatubo as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But would, would love to see that go over seven. Um, but time will tell, won't it? Well, hopefully, mate, he doesn't win this weekend. He gets dropped down to seven furlongs somewhere. And it's only yeah. you and me that are on. And that's it. <laughs> at 40 to one. Uh, it's something like that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think the other two, just, just yeah. to make a point, Al Madhar and Insipher, they were first and second at Nubra last time. I know Al Madhar is very well, very, very well thought of um, by his trainer, Richard Hannon. They've both just got to step up massively to, um, on what they've achieved and what they showed to try and, to try and win this group too. But as I say, highest ground will probably win. You'll lose nothing by not backing it. You know, I'll try and find something to finish second. And if, if it wins, a um, bit of a bonus. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I agree. I think highest ground will win this. I hope he does. I think it's going to be he's going to be an exciting horse going forward. And uh, yeah, as, as Steve says, we'd love to see a real flag bearer for Sir Michael Stout. That would be very nice. Um, great stuff, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, that's Thursday, Stan and Dust, both at Newmarket and at York. Uh, a very exciting day's racing. And um, best of luck with all your bets at home. See you all soon. Love it.